Hi, this is DIY Just from DIY Nexus. Today we have something a bit different. I'm going to show you how to replace the batteries in a CyberPower 1285 AVR UPS. The concepts are similar for many other brands and models of UPSs, so I hope this info is useful. First a disclaimer, I'm not an expert, and as always, if you're uncomfortable working with electronics, please contact an appropriate repair tech. I have this CyberPower UPS which has been acting up. I'll show you what it's doing. Even when plugged in, after charging for an extended time, when you try to turn it on, it just flashes. So we're going to turn it off and unplug it. To get to the batteries on this UPS, you have to turn it over and find the screw in the front. It's right here. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove it. To remove the front of the unit, you want to lift up on this panel. It may take some force. It will then pull outwards. Now we can turn it back over. I should have warned you at the beginning that these are heavy. To complete the removal of the front panel, you'll need to disconnect this connector. It just pulls straight upwards. Set this aside. To get out the battery pack, we're going to have to disconnect the batteries at these two connectors. Grab each side of the connector and pull, and they should come apart. Don't grab the wires directly. Now we can grab the plastic tabs on the batteries, and being careful of these wires, slide the battery pack out. Sometimes the batteries can swell and may be difficult to remove. Just keep working at it carefully. Generally when a UPS fails, it's these batteries which have failed. The manufacturer of each different UPS offers these batteries for sale. In this case, CyberPower has the original equipment battery pack for around $100 plus shipping on their website, and Amazon carries the same thing for around $88, including shipping. On the other hand, if you're willing to do a little more work, you can rebuild the pack with good quality aftermarket batteries for about half the price. We'll do the less expensive rebuild. To begin, you want to check the existing battery's specs. The important numbers here are 12 volts and 8 amp hours. You can also see that there are two separate batteries here, so we'll need a quantity of two. Then order a similar replacement battery on a reputable site like chromebattery.com. I ordered these two for around $42 shipped. They arrived quickly and look to be a perfect match for the originals. Here's how to rebuild this pack. First thing we have to do is remove the plastic sheet which is adhered to the front of these batteries. If you're careful, you can keep it in good condition and use it on the other ones. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now it gets a little trickier. We're going to separate the batteries carefully and disconnect the wiring. If necessary, take a picture of the wiring so you remember how to reassemble it. I'm going to replace the batteries one at a time so we don't end up confusing what's going on here.
The first side was easy, the second side's a little bit tougher. That was a bit challenging, but now that it's back together, we can reattach the plastic if it's in good shape. If it isn't, I usually use clear packing tape and some scissors to wrap the whole pack. And there we go, packed with replaced batteries. Before we install this, I'll get the old batteries out of the way. These are recyclable, and I like to attach the terminal covers to these before I send them off to the recycling center. Reinstallation is basically the reverse of removal. You want to be careful on this UPS of the wires. They need to sit into their grooves appropriately. And when you slide the pack in, you don't want them to be pinched. Now we'll reconnect the terminals. Carefully push the wires back in so they're the same orientation as when you started. Now we'll install the cover plate by being sure to align the connector with the socket and push it back on. To reinstall the front, align these hooks with the slots Push the panel in and slide it upwards. It's easier to do this if you lay it on its side. Pro tip, this UPS isn't very easy to put the front back on. So, to help the process, you want to take the two connections and the wires and pull them downwards towards the bottom of the UPS a little bit. This is going to get them out of the way of this plastic piece here when we go to reinstall it. Then turn it upside down and put the screw back in. Now we'll give it a test. Scrolling through the menus on this UPS shows that it has about 37% charge available, which isn't too bad considering I haven't charged it yet. I'll plug in one of my lights and we'll test it. simulating a power fault. It works! Let me know if you have any suggestions or questions in the comments below. And if you like this video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching.